forms of DNA. So with this, we will also we look at another structural aspect of DNA. Ever since Watson and Crick proposed their DNA model, we are all uh, very familiar with the B DNA, that is the B form of the DNA. And uh, most studies report that the most prevalent form of DNA which is present in our systems is the B form of DNA. However, uh, studies have shown that there are more forms of DNA possible and uh, these more forms of DNA has been possible because of the structural variations that happen within the helix itself. It also happens so big that these forms of DNA uh, are possible because of uh, its interaction with uh, its surroundings or interaction with other molecules or because of the uh, nucleotide sequence present in the DNA per se. Now, so the outcomes of uh, this session is basically we will come to know the structure that structural variations can lead to form different DNA. The different forms of DNA can be formed depending on its interaction with the surroundings and conditions and there is always a structure function relationship. So if it is in the uh, B form then what makes it to be present in the B form and how does it function? If it is present in another form, then what has been responsible for the formation of that uh, um, conformation of DNA and what is the functionality that is associated with that? So, like I said earlier, we are already familiar with the B form of DNA. Uh, uh, all the postulates that were given by Watson and Crick pertain to the B form of DNA. Rosalind Franklin, uh, who was responsible for uh, working with two different samples of DNA, with the DNA being uh, different in terms of the hydration levels, also looked at another form of DNA, which is the ADNA. So the second form of DNA uh, that is prevalent within the system, within our system, is something that is called as ADNA. Uh, ADNA appears when the relative humidity in the DNA is less than 75% and when the humidity is less than 75% its phosphate and the phosphate sugar backbone is able to interact with lesser number of water molecules. Uh, like the B DNA, uh, the A DNA is a right handed helix, it is anti parallel and it also has the same Watson and Crick complementary base pairing. Uh, but what is very, uh, um, very distinctive about A form of DNA is that it is wider than the B DNA. You can already see in this structure that this uh, is wider than this and it is shorter compared to the B DNA. So that is something that is there and therefore the number of base pairs that are present in the A DNA are rather tilted compared to uh, the ones that are present in the B DNA. Again, another thing that was noted earlier as well is that the sugar conformation in the A DNA is the C3 prime endopucker conformation. And this C3 prime endopucker conformation is responsible for tilting the base pairs away from the normal to the helix by a tilt degree of 19 degrees. It's also observed that because of that, uh, it has 11 base pairs per turn uh, and every turn is accounted for to be at 2.8 nanometers. Uh, however, you cannot restrict a DNA only to the dehydrated form of DNA. Uh, what is observed is that a, uh, a similar structure as a DNA can be found when you have a double stranded D, uh, when you have RNA present as a double strand. So regions where you have uh, double strands of RNA formed, uh, those portions are similar to that of a DNA. Uh, also, when you have an RNA binding to DNA, and this is generally when transcription of DNA happens or transcription in the center dogma happens, you will have that using the DNA as a template, a new RNA is formed. So the RNA that exists with the DNA forms an RNA-DNA hybrid. And uh, that portion where you have the RNA-DNA hybrid, the structure is very similar to that of the A-DNA. 
uh, the response, uh, the reason why it is uh, similar to the ADNA is because of the presence of a hydroxyl group and its two prime carbon. So the hydroxyl group is bulkier than just the proton uh, that is present on the two prime carbon in the deoxy form of the ribose. And uh, you will not have the RNA forming a typical or a classical Watson and Crick beta helix because of the steric hindrance due to this hydroxyl group. But when it tends to form the A type of helix, the, o prime, uh, the two prime oxygen is projected outwards, accommodating the RNA to be present with the or accommodating the ribose sugar to be present with the DNA. And that's how, uh, that is how it forms the ADNA part. Third form, which uh, has been come across in various situations in DNA, is the Z-DNA. Uh, the Z-DNA uh, was discovered by Alexander Rich and colleagues. When they were studying the structure of an oligonucleotide made up of alternating pyrimidine spurins, pyrimidine spurins, you can see this. So the moment you have a stretch of pyrimidine purine sequences, one thing that became very apparent and very clear is that it formed a zigzag structure. That's how the name zig, uh, ZDNA comes from. Uh, so uh, the ZDNA, like the BDNA uh, and the ADNA, both uh, uh, the ZDNA is also antiparallel with Watson and Crick base pairing. But one major difference that has been observed with the ZDNA is that it is not a right-handed helix. It is, in fact, a left-handed Helix. So this is something that makes it very different from, apart from its zigzag uh, backbone, uh, that it is left-handed makes it very different from both ADNA and BDNA. Another aspect that comes across is that the ZDNA is a narrowest form of DNA uh, when you compare it with the ADNA and, and the BDNA. Now, the reason for uh, the phosphate backbone being zigzag, uh, it seems is because uh, with the kind of way it is structured, the phosphates have uh, are closer to each other. And because the phosphates are closer to each other, they unless there is a lot of mental ions present, then the phosphates uh, are, uh, repuls uh, are repelling each other. So therefore, there are a lot of metal ions associated. And because of the association of the metal ions with the phosphate, uh, it kind of forms a zigzag structure. The purine nucleotides, are shown to have a C3 prime endopucker sugar, while the pyrimidine nucleotides are shown to be associated with ribose that has C2 prime endopucker structure. So within the same DNA, within the same form, you can observe that the sugar structure varies. Uh, interestingly, one other fact that comes across is that in all the three, that is ADNA, BDNA, and ZDNA, uh, there is a marked difference in the dimension of the major and the minor grooves as well. So let us just go to uh, look at what is the what are the comparison or the compar uh, uh, the parameters that vary from one form to the other form. When you look at the shape, uh, the A is the broadest, Z is the narrowest, and therefore B DNA forms what is called as the intermediate uh, shape. Uh, you would have 3.4 Rangstrom's distance between two base pairs. Uh, which is different in the other two. In A, it is about 2.3 ang angstroms between the two base pairs, and here it is 3.8. The helical diameter is different in all the three, this being narrow, this being broad. Uh, the A and the B DNA are right-handed helices, while the Z is the left-handed helix. The A and the DNA and the B DNA have more of anti-nucleotide conformation, Whereas in case of the ZDNA, there is an alternating anti-syn, anti-syn kind of nucleotide conformation. So this is another difference that is observed. The number of base pairs per turn are varying. Uh, the pitch per turn of helix, that is the helical turn, the length of one helix itself is varying between all the three. And the tilt angle is highly varied. You hardly have any tilt of one base pair with respect to the other from the normal to the helix. And uh, there is the highest bent or tilt angle in the ADNA. And uh, you have about 9 degrees of tilt uh, with respect to the ZDNA. You can see 
differences in the major groove and the minor groove in all the three. Okay, so with this, you can look at how each form is different from the other, but the characteristics you look at it, none of the characteristics are not there in any of them. So it's basically that one form can go to the other form, the other can go to the third form, but how is something that is still being studied. So let's make the conclusions. B DNA and A DNA are right-handed helices, while the Z DNA are left-handed. There are differences in their dimensions and it has been seen to exist in different parts of a DNA depending on its interaction, depending on its nucleotide sequences, as well as the environmental conditions. Two other forms, that is the C DNA and the E DNA, have been identified, but only in in vitro studies. Uh, with cDNA predicted to have about 9.33 base pairs per turn, while the eDNA having 8.33 base pairs per turn, but neither cDNA or eDNA have been found in vivo studies. The base stacking, twisting, rolling, sliding of base pairs with respect to each other can lead to interconversion of one form to another form. Thus, the DNA has the ability to exist in different forms. Thank you.